Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet play a lot with the idea of history. Be it the natural history of Pokemon, raising questions about everything we know about their evolution with the Paradox Pokemon, or the history of the Paldea region by us having actual history classes with Professor Ryford and seeing hints of the past with all the ruins around the Paldean landscape. Some of these ruins are very curious though, and they seem to not serve any in-game purpose, at least right now, and they might be connected to some really big Pokemon. So hey, I'm not so a strainer, and what about the Watchtowers and Titans? Let's get into it. One of the first things we noticed in the early trailers for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet were the strange towers that early on seemed to be connected to the Titan Pokemon. Our first look at them had Titan Cloth close to one, and since it was named the Path of Legends and they looked old, it made sense. Now we know that it is very likely wrong since the Watchtowers are basically not mentioned throughout the whole game. Some of them are still standing, others have crumbled, and uh, right now I think they serve only for us to find our occasional gimme gold chests. But still, in the past when they were built, there had to have been a purpose for them. And so for that, let's look at what they are based on. As most of you know, the vast region of Paldea is not based on the country alone, but actually on the Iberian Peninsula, which is divided mostly between Spain and Portugal, with a little bit of southern France, Andorra and Gibraltar. The Pokemon version of it is basically a mix of mostly Spain with some Portugal in it. Like I've said in the past, the Iberian Peninsula was invaded before, and we can see that in many old buildings around the area. I can go outside now and probably find the influence of the Roman Empire in many old constructions that I see and, in some instances, you can also find Islamic influence. That's because both of them controlled the peninsula for a long time. They weren't really well received by the people of the peninsula and so there was a need to control its people. To be able to not let them move around unnoticed. To keep watch. And so, they built watchtowers. You can see that all around the peninsula, usually in high places, which seems to also be mostly the case in Paldea. And, speaking of Paldea, we know that the past of the region was also filled with war. So it makes sense to think that the watchtowers were built in order to do what they were meant to do in the real world. Keep watch of the enemy. But the Paldean Empire wasn't the original ruler of the region. They simply started ruling the region around 2000 years before current day. And we know that the region was a lot different than what it is now, since it is said that after they fell into a decline, around 800 years before current day, they united with surrounding nations, forming the Paldea region we know today. So that means that there were many nations in what is the landmass of Paldea, which considering the fact that all the towers, the watchtowers look the same, and they are scattered around the region, meaning that they were probably built by the same people but they are not in the place of one nation, they might have had a different purpose. So we have 14 towers total in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. 14 doesn't tell us a lot when talking about Pokemon. You have 18 types, so they're not related to the Pokemon types, despite them being a big theme in the games. You usually have 8 badges, so no new challenges like that as well. So what is the number 14 related to? Well, it might be nothing, but these games have a big focus on stars, constellations. We've talked about it before, but the team star based placement and squad names are based on Cassiopeia's constellation, which is also Penny's alter ego. The placement of the gems also seems to have the seven stars of Ursa Major with Polaris above. And while you can take the Titan location and kinda draw the Libra constellation, you find more in what they actually are. Cloth seems to be the Cancer constellation, Dondozo and Tatsugiri could be Pisces or Draco, Bombardier the Gru's constellation and Earthworm might somehow be the Serpents or Serpent despite being an Earthworm. Iron Treads and Great Tusk could be the Elephant Trunk Nebula present in the Cepheus constellation. And that is not even all, you have the Circinus constellation or the Compass and you have Sagitta or the Arrow, you know, like the Compass and Gita, stars are very important in this game, I'm telling you. Now let's carry on. When trying to find a meaning for the number 14 and the watchtowers, I found myself facing a possibility that it is all connected to the Titan Pokemon after all, or at least locations where Titan Pokemon were sighted in the past. So back to Titans and Stars, I found one thing. There are 12 common zodiac signs, but there have been people pushing for the 14 zodiac signs. That and the zodiac transcends just the western notion of them. 
And when I got to this part, I could kind of find some interesting connections by mixing the Eastern and Western interpretations of the Zodiac. Kind of like they're doing with the Eastern and Western elements of Paldea and Kitakami. With this in mind, we have Cloth for Cancer, Tatsugiri with the Dondozu interaction could be Pisces, Earthworm might be the second animal of the Chinese Zodiac Snake, which is an Earthworm, Iron Treads or Great Tusks might be the elephant of the traditional Thai interpretation of the Chinese Zodiac, and Boomer Deer can simply be the bird from the Tibetan calendar. This, of course, creates a bit of an issue. The whole thing is an absolute mess. By mixing elements of both Eastern and Western Zodiacs, we made it next to impossible to predict where they would be going next. It would be easy to predict that Leo could be Pyroar or that Taurus could be Taurus, but impossible to know what things like Virgo or Aquarius would be, or if they would even stay on the Western Zodiac at all. That is actually one of the reasons why I'm making the video. I spend a lot of time researching this, but my research might be flawed, I can miss stuff. And I'm sure there's people out there that understand these topics a lot better than I do and they are bound to find connections that I can't find. So please, if you find something, let me know in the comments down below. And now let's look at why more Titan Pokemon is not that far-fetched. During the Herba Mystica storyline, we needed one of each Herba Mystica in order to save Arvan's Mabustif. So things were done so we could find them. Still, and you guys know how I feel about this, nobody knew about the Titans. They showed up only when those who believed in them started looking for them. And we know they were talked about in the Scarlet and Violet books, but we don't know how many different ones there are since we can't read the whole book. And if we go to Arvin's room, we can find a map with various other places marked as places of interest. They don't align completely with the placement of the towers, but some of them do. But the important part is that there is more than meets the eye. In fact, you have 5 different colors on the markers, just like you have 5 different types of Herba Mystica, implying there are more places that have this item. Besides the one we can find in Terror Raids, I'm sure. So, if what Arvan says is true and the Scarlet and Violet books have awakened this curiosity, could he continue to search for more in order to understand the mysteries that surround his parents and thus possibly bring to life the rest of the Titans in the books? Also, more people know about them now, so more people might start believing in them and thus making them real. But that's not all, we seem to have the Blueberry Academy looking at what seems to be Baldea. The Blueberry Academy, if this is Paldea, seems to have a special interest in phenomenon happening in the region, possibly due to how dangerous things can get there. If more Titan Pokemon start appearing, that could certainly pose some danger that powerful trainers from a battle academy could help in. And if we assume that, since they are part of the Indigo Disc, they will have knowledge about Terrapagos, they might understand what's going on with the whole thing about Area Zero. The only issue with this is of course the fact that Arvan has 12 markers on the map, which while it goes pretty well with the 12 zodiac signs, doesn't go that well with the 14 towers we have available. Still, and thank you Matthew for the Hawkeye you had on Discord, if you climb one of these towers you find a clock-like pattern with 12 different sections. This aligns very well with the time theme that you have in Scarlet and Violet, but it also aligns very well with the 12 months of the year like the Western Zodiac or the 12 year cycle of the Chinese Zodiac. But now, I don't know what to make of that, and so let me finish off my theory. So, the watchtowers might have been used to keep track of Pokemon that were deemed dangerous, and not really have had any military use in any Paldean Empire war since that wouldn't fit the timeline of their rise and demise. Still, there are some inconsistencies with the number of towers and my speculation of the Titan origins, which makes it hard to form a consistent theory. With that in mind though, I believe that whatever these towers were used for is now being done by the Blueberry Academy, something that is recent and that seems to have some connection with what explains all the strange things happening in Paldea, and that is Terrapagos. The awakening of Terra energy that might have been triggered by the professor's experiments might have also started a chain of events that led into the formation of the Blueberry Academy, and the fact that we have dealt with some, the Paradox and Titan Pokemon, might be the reason why we'll be exchanged students there in the hidden treasure of Area Zero. There are likely more Titan and Paradox Pokemon waiting for us in the DLC, and us, together with the battle students of the Blueberry Academy, are likely the ones that will be able to stop them. And that is all I have for you today. I know it is a bit of a messy theory, but this thing with zodiac signs and constellations can take so many turns that I wasn't even able to try and find my way out of there.
So what about you? Do you have any other ideas? Do you believe we'll have more Titan Pokemon? Let me know in the comments down below. And now like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and also ring the bell so you know when the next video is out. You can follow me on social media and Twitch, I stream there Wednesday to Sunday, not Saturday, or join our Discord, all the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.